I'll take your gun. Well, Keith, I'll be on my way. Guess I won't need my gun in New York. Well, Tom, you're aiming to spend your vacation in the big town, eh? <laughs> Looking at the tall buildings and the short skirts. <laughs> I've been trying to get there all my life, and something always interferes. But this time it looks as though I'll make it. How do you like my new outfit, huh? <laughs> Pretty nifty. <laughs> Where'd you get it? Mail order house? And two pair of it. No. <laughs> Well, if you got your heart set on going to the big town, you better knock on wood. You know what happened last time. You're right up that. Telegram for you, Tom. Get this off, Colonel. I guess I didn't knock wood soon enough. Who's Ed? Who's Annie? Ed's my brother, and Annie is his wife. They got a little ranch down towards the border. you I don't know where Ed is, Sheriff, but I do know that he didn't kill Lem Chandler. Well, you admit this is Ed's gun, don't you? Of course it's his gun. It's got his name on the butt. But that doesn't prove anything. Well, one of the bullets that killed Chandler was fired from this gun. We sent it and the slug over to help to a ballistic expert. Now, will you tell me where Ed is? I tell you I don't know, Sheriff. gun did the job. And if he wasn't on the other end of it, why ain't he here now? Hello, Annie. Tom! Oh, I'm glad you're here. They're trying to prove that Ed killed a man. Tell him it isn't true. No, no, don't worry, Annie. Don't worry. This is my brother-in-law, Tom Wade. Sheriff Baines, Tom. Glad to know you, Sheriff. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Wade. But I'm sorry your brother's in a jam. Well, maybe we can get him out of it. Uh, what evidence have you got against him? Uh, one of the shots was fired from your brother's gun. The other was fired from a rifle. What about fingerprints? Oh, the bed would be to wipe off the fingerprints and then leave the gun with his name on it. Yes, he, he would, wouldn't he? And Ed isn't a chump, Mr. Bain. If you had any sense at all, you'd see quiet, that... Quiet, Annie, quiet. Sit down, everybody. Now, just tell me exactly what happened. It was this way, Tom. Ed rode over uh, to quiet, town. Quiet, Annie, quiet. Let's have the sheriff's point of view. That's the one that's important. Who was the man that was killed? Lem Chandler. He was the president of the bank over at San Martin.
Chandler personally took the payroll every week over to the hide tannery at Bardos. He drove his own car, took your brother Ed along as bodyguard. Bodyguard? You mean to say Ed was a bodyguard? Yes, Tom. You see, Mr. Chandler held a mortgage on this place, and when it came due... Thanks, Mrs. Wade. I hadn't heard about that. When Ed couldn't pay the mortgage off, Mr. Chandler gave him the job guarding the payroll. Well, that just about completes my case. I was looking for a motive. Hmm. Your brother Ed needed that money. You're after the wrong man, Sheriff. I'll prove it to you before I'm finished. I happen to know Ed. Well, you don't happen to know where he's hiding out, do you? What do you mean? I mean, there were two slugs in Chandler's body. Can you prove that you weren't in this part of the country two days ago? I could, if it was worth the trouble. Right now, I'm going to be too busy proving Ed's innocence to bother about an alibi. And uh, don't try to pull a gun on me. It makes me skittish and nervous. All right. But I believe you know where Ed's hiding out. And if you help him to get away, I'll charge you with being an accessory after the fact. Accessory after the fact? It sounds pretty tough to call somebody. But as soon as I find out what it means, I'll come and see you. Uh. in your telegram not to tell anyone. Good. Tom, what are you doing? There was someone listening here a moment ago. It was a woman. She couldn't have gone very far. What are you doing out here? I was watching Ed Wade play. Thought maybe he'd try to sneak home. Not a chance. It looks as though he'd get clean away. You know, there was a man there talking to the sheriff. Looked a little like Wade. Has Ed Wade got a brother? Not that I know of. Don't you worry, Celia. We'll find the man that kills your father. Please don't, Jeff. But you know that Wait I... Wait until Ed Wade is in jail. Then I'll let you see you.
What do you want? Get down, please. I want to talk to you. Want me to help you down? You were snooping around Ed Wade's place a while ago. What were you looking for? You... you saw me. Of course I saw you. As a detective, you'd make a first-class chambermaid. You left a trail that a blind man could follow. Well, that's no business of yours. I'm making it my business. What were you looking for? I was looking for Ed Wade, the man who killed my father. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Chandler. But you're on the wrong track. Ed is a, a friend of mine. Yes, and he must have had help to get away with that robbery. Where were you about that time? Well, may I go? Or am I to be treated as Dad was? Sure you can go. I don't want any part of you. You'll get in my hair. I'm giving you one more chance, Wade, to tell me where you've hidden that payroll. Don't try to kid me, Tracy. The minute you find that money, that's my finish. Besides, Tom will be along pretty soon. Tom? Sure, my brother. Cattle detective up north. As soon as he learns I've disappeared, he'll come a-running. Bart, Larry. So that's it. Tom's here already. Let's go outside. Is this true? Strange that it looks like this Ed arrived in town this morning. What are we going to do? He'll investigate the scene of the robbery. Meet me in the woods above the road in about 30 minutes. And bring my horse. Right. Jeff's rifle. We better get down there. Nah, he said to wait here.
there's Jeff now, driving as if somebody was after him. One man job, boys. You can get back to the prisoner. Look there. A one man job, eh, Tracy? We can cut him off at the other end of the pass. Wait till I change. Check after him, Larry. We'll take the shortcut. Right. Let's go back.
Nice work, old timer boy. Sheriff. Well, what's eating you now? Listen to the new song I just wrote. The poet may sing of the coming of spring to his home on the prairie so wide. Of the song of the lark and the prairie dog's bark with the rope swinging buckaroos ride. But give me a home where you can never roam, where the bars are all solid and tight. Where there's three meals a day that they can take away when they look you up snugly at night. How do you like that, Sheriff? That's fine, Jake. I'll knock two days off your sentence for that. Oh, heck, Sheriff. You can't do that to me. I like it here. All right. You can serve the full ten days. But sing that last verse over again. Oh, give me a neat little eight-five tip. Hi, Wayne. Hello, Sheriff. Sit down. So you've decided to do a little talking, eh? Yes, I'll talk. What's that? Oh, hobo. Ten days for vagrancy. Well, what's on your mind? You got the rifle bullet that was fired into Chandler? Sure. There it is. And this is the one that was fired out of Ed's six-shooter. This one was fired at me today. Uh, have you got a glass? Yeah. See how that flaw in the rifling cut both in the same place? Well, sir, it looks as though they were both fired from the same gun. And the owner of that gun drives a heavy car with a peculiar tread on the tires, like this. Got a man that would help me find that car? Well, I don't think you'll find many tires with a tread like that. And I ain't got any deputies right now. Don't look at me, mister. I'm no detective. I'm just a plain hobo. Look, I just want someone to peek into a few garages and check cars in the street. Some other fella, not me. Maybe I can get the sheriff to shorten your sentence. Let me handle him. Jake, perhaps I can give you 10 days more. What is it you wanted me to do, mister? <laughs> <laughs> Sent for me, see it? Yes. I've seen that man again. The one that was at Ed Wade's place. You've seen him? When? Shortly after I met you. He stopped me on the road and...
want you to drive me to the Wade Ranch. What is it, Jeff? What's the matter? It's a tire thief, I think. But the paper, what's on it? Oh, nothing, nothing. Let's hurry. Find the car? Yeah, but a man came. What a gun? What make was the car? Oh, I, I, I didn't notice. Did you get the license number? Uh, I forgot to look. Mm, what did you do? I ran. Gee, I'm glad to be home safe. I've learned enough to prove that Ed isn't guilty. And I don't know who the killer is, nor what became of the money. Nor what became of Ed. They've killed him, Tom. If he was alive, he'd have come home. Or sent me some word. He may be held prisoner. But why would they hold him if they got the money? Maybe they didn't get it. Listen, Annie, who knew the route Chandler would take when he carried that payroll? Why, only Chandler himself. Unless Jeff Tracy knew. They change the route each week. And who is this uh, Jeff Tracy? He's a lawyer in town. He's supposed to be engaged to Chandler's daughter. Better not drive any closer. They might hear the car. Tracy was Chandler's lawyer, and he might have known. <coughs> Somebody's coming. My horse always tips me off. Here, sit still. No one there but Mrs. Wade. We'd better move off a little and watch the house. Good evening, folks. Pretty late for a call. But Mrs. Wade always welcomes visitors. Won't you kindly step inside? Uh, we were just going to knock. Yeah, so I noticed. Company, Annie. This is Miss Chandler. How do you do? And this gentleman... Miss Tracy. I've met Mr. Tracy. Won't you sit down? We will stop, thanks. Since you're so confident that Ed is innocent, perhaps you can tell us who the murderer is. Not quite yet. 
But I can tell you something about him. Yes? First, he was a friend of your father, close enough to be in his confidence. And he owned a 30-30 rifle. And he tried another murder with it this afternoon. <laughs> Made a darn good try, too. You know so much about him. Why not give him a name? I might do that in a day or two. But Ed Wade is not here. I give you my word. Your word isn't quite good enough. I wish you'd trade your little detective friend to quit snooping and popping her head in windows. She is welcome to search the place. Come, Jeff. Good night, Sherlock. Tom, Tracy had a gun in his coat. He might have shot you. Not with that one. What I'm wondering is if he owns a rifle. Penny? Yeah. Doesn't take much of this stuff to fill you up. Tracy wants both of us. Both of us? What about Wade? We'll lock the door so he can't get away. Hey, wait a minute. How about a cigarette? Over by the Wade place. I don't remember nothing. Just a man with a gun. There's no use. No, all this hocus pocus about bullets and tire treads is no use. I've listened to enough of it. Meaning what? Meaning that you're trying to throw dust in my eyes so that your brother will get away. Cattlemen's Protective Association, eh? Ed is not trying to get away, Sheriff. If he isn't held prisoner somewhere, he's dead. What's your plan? He suspects me of the Chandler job. If he sees me around here, he'll trail me. Quiet! Someone's coming. Keep your chin up, Annie. I'm gonna find Ed today. Or well, the man who did the killing. Don't worry. You know the place. On your way.
Get the horses, Bart. What are we going to do with him? Take him to the shack. And when Ed sees him, he'll talk. Put him on a horse. I'll meet you at the shack later. Hey, Bart, leave the horses and come with me. Glad to if you'd untie me. I thought that smoke would fetch somebody. Is this a trick? A trick? You mean, did I tie myself up like this? Ed Wade, who killed my father? I think it was Jeff Tracy. Anyway, he was in charge of the gang that stuck us up. It was a rifle shot from ambush that got him. As soon as I saw your dad was dead, I grabbed the money bag and ran. Dad was shot twice, once with your gun. The dirty dog. There's somebody at the shack. That's swell, Miss Chandler. My horse will carry double. He's in the woods back of the house. Someone's coming. Give me your gun. Up there, quick. How'd you get loose? Friction, you poor sap. You can't keep a wade tied. Maybe not. But we've found a way to make you talk. I thought you'd given that up. Sit down. Bart, see if Larry's got here with the other one. Hold on, Sheriff. I don't want to do this. I belong here. I'm just a plain hobo. Hold up your right hand. You solemnly swear that... Wait a minute, Sheriff. You solemnly swear that you will obey the laws of the state? Sit down. Hello, Ed. Any sense of love? Sit down, you. Now, Ed, will you tell us where that payroll is? Or is the cattleman's protective going to lose its best man? Time to take a big jump, Ed. We'll both live to see him hang. I'm afraid he means it this time, Tom. You've got no secrets he needs. The money's hidden in the giant rocks, but I can't tell you how to find it. 
You're going to show us the way. Come on. Larry, you guard that one. If there's any more friction, you know what to do. Bart, time on a horse. Don't go, Ed. Ed! Ed, don't go! Twist the lock off. Oh, I ain't no burglar. I'm just a plain hobo. Well, you're my deputy. Do as you're told. Oh, all right. I gum Tom Wade was right. We better find him. Sherlock, how did you get here? Snooping around and sticking my head in windows. I sure apologize. We'll pick him up later. Now we've got to get to Ed. Come on. That giant rock. I know the way. Yes, 
stay here. I'll go up alone. Sheriff. I'll stay right here and guard the car. You come with me. You're my deputy. Major Killer, Sheriff. I arrest you in the name of the law. Sheriff, you better do it. Gee, are you all right, Tom? Sure, Ed. Thanks, old timer. Don't thank me. If it hadn't been for this Sherlock here, we'd both be playing harps. <laughs> Oh, shucks, honey. I knew everything was all right as soon as I heard Tom was here. How about a job with the protectors? Uh, the whole force or just part of it? Whatever you say. Well, deputy, you want to keep your job? Don't look like Tom will need me anymore. You better give me 30 days in jail. 